Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to tell you a thrilling and tragic story of how four Palestinian terrorists hijacked an Italian cruise ship in 1985 and killed an innocent American passenger. This is the story of the Achil Lauro hijacking. The Achil Lauro was a luxury ocean liner that sailed from Genoa, Italy, on October 1985 for a 12-day cruise of the Mediterranean Sea. It had 748 passengers and several hundred crew members on board, including many elderly and disabled people. The ship was named after a famous Italian politician and businessman who had died in 1982. The cruise was supposed to be a relaxing and enjoyable vacation for the passengers who visited various ports and attractions along the way. On 7th October, the ship docked at Alexandria, Egypt, and 651 passengers disembarked to tour the pyramids, intending to rendezvous with the ship at Port Said that night. But among the remaining 97 passengers were four men who had a sinister plan. They had boarded the ship in Genoa with fake Moroccan passports and posed as tourists. They were actually members of a faction of the Palestine Liberation Front PLF, a militant group that sought to fight for Palestinian rights and independence from Israel. The PLF was led by Mohammed Jadan, also known as Abu Abbas, who was aligned with the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, the main political representative of the Palestinians. The PLO was headed by Yasser Arafat, who had been involved in several armed conflicts and peace negotiations with Israel. The four hijackers were Bassam Alashkar, 23 years old, the leader of the group, Yamad Maruf Al-Asadi, 23 years old, Ibrahim Fater Abdelatif, 20 years old, Yusuf Majd Molki, 23 years old, they had smuggled AK-47 machine guns and hand grenades in their luggage and hid them in their cabins. Their mission was to open fire on Israeli soldiers when the ship reached Ashdod, Israel, a suicide mission that they hoped would draw attention to their cause and pressure Israel to release Palestinian prisoners. But their plan went wrong when they realized that most of the passengers had left the ship in Alexandria. They decided to improvise and take over the ship instead. At around 1 p.m. on 7th October, they stormed out of their cabins with their weapons and corralled the crew and the passengers in various locations. They forced the captain, Gerardo de Rosa, to leave port and sail towards Syria. They announced that they were members of the PLF and demanded that Israel release 50 Palestinian prisoners within six hours or they would start killing hostages. They also demanded that Syria allow them to dock at Tartus, where they hoped to escape. The hijackers allowed some crew members to continue with their duties and treated some passengers with respect, while others were harassed and threatened. They also allowed some passengers to make phone calls to their families or the media. The captain tried to calm down the hijackers and negotiate with them. He also secretly sent distress signals to alert authorities about the situation. The news of the hijacking quickly spread around the world and sparked a diplomatic crisis. Several countries were involved in trying to resolve it peacefully and safely. Egypt was the first country to respond, as it was responsible for security at its ports. President Hosni Mubarak sent his top aide, Osama El Baj, to Cairo airport to communicate with the hijackers via radio. El Baj tried to persuade them to return to Egypt and surrender peacefully. Israel was also concerned about the fate of its citizens on board. Prime Minister Shimon Peres convened an emergency cabinet meeting and ordered the Israeli Navy to track down the ship. He also contacted Arafat and asked him to intervene and stop the hijacking. 
Arafat denied any involvement or knowledge of the hijacking and claimed that it was carried out by a rogue faction of the PLF that he did not control. He sent Jadan, his deputy in charge of special operations, to Cairo to mediate the situation. The United States was also involved in trying to end the crisis. President Ronald Reagan condemned the hijacking as an act of terrorism and vowed to bring justice to those responsible. He also contacted Mubarak and Pers and offered his support and cooperation. But as time passed, tensions rose on board. The hijackers became frustrated and angry with the lack of progress and the refusal of Syria to let them dock. They also became paranoid and suspicious of the captain and the crew, who they thought were trying to sabotage their plan. On 8th October, at around 3 pm, they decided to make an example of one of the hostages. They chose Leon Klinghofer, a 69-year-old Jewish American man who was confined to a wheelchair due to a stroke. He was on the cruise with his wife, Marilyn, to celebrate their 36th wedding anniversary. The hijackers dragged Klinghofer from his cabin to the deck and shot him in the head and chest. They then threw his body and his wheelchair overboard. They also threatened to kill more hostages if their demands were not met. Klinghofer's murder shocked and outraged the world. He was seen as an innocent victim of a senseless act of violence. His wife, who did not witness his death, was devastated and traumatized. The hijacking finally came to an end on 9th October, after two days of negotiations and drama. The hijackers agreed to release the hostages and surrender in exchange for safe passage through Egypt and immunity from prosecution. They stayed the ship back to Port Said, where they were greeted by Jadan and Elban. They disembarked from the ship with their weapons and boarded an Egyptian airliner that was supposed to take them to Tunisia. But as soon as they took off, they were intercepted by four US Navy F-14 fighter jets that had been dispatched from a nearby aircraft carrier. The jets forced the airliner to land at a NATO base in Sigonella, Sicily, where a standoff ensued between US and Italian forces. The US wanted to arrest the hijackers and extradite them to face trial in America, while Italy claimed jurisdiction over them as the ship was registered in Italy. After several hours of tense negotiations, Italy prevailed and took custody of the hijackers. The US reluctantly agreed to let them go, but insisted that Jadan be handed over as well, as he was wanted for masterminding the hijacking. The hijackers were tried in Italy and sentenced to prison terms ranging from 15 years to 30 years. Jadan was also tried in absentia and sentenced to life imprisonment. He had escaped from Italy with the help of Iraqi diplomats and fled to Iraq, where he remained until 2003. The survivors of the hijacking returned to their homes and tried to recover from their ordeal. Many of them suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. Some of them also sued the owners of the ship for negligence and lack of security. The family of Klinghofer also sought justice for his murder. They sued the PLO and Arafat for sponsoring terrorism and won a $1.8 billion judgment in a U.S. court in 1997. However, they never received any money from the PLO, which claimed it had no assets or funds. The hijacking of the Achil Lauro had a lasting impact on international politics and security. It exposed the vulnerability of cruise ships to terrorist attacks and prompted tighter measures to prevent them. It also strained relations between the US, Italy, Egypt, Israel, and the PLO, and complicated efforts to achieve peace in the Middle East. The Achil Lauro itself continued to operate as a cruise ship until 1994, 
when it caught fire off Somalia and sunk. No one was killed or injured in this incident. The memory of Leon Klinghofer lives on through his family and friends who have established a foundation in his name that supports programs for people with disabilities, education, arts and interfaith dialogue. The hijacking of the Achil Lauro was one of the most dramatic and tragic events in modern history. It showed us the horrors of terrorism and the heroism of ordinary people. It also taught us that we should never give up on our dreams or our value. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more stories like this one. See you next time.